As you recall, at the last meeting, there was an issue raised as to whether there was a notice posted for the last ACPT meeting. Um, subsequent to that, um, Mr. Mill and I spoke, and I have spoken with the attorneys for all the agencies that appoint members to this committee, including um, Tabarda, MPO, and the PPC. I also spoke with the city attorney's office in St. Petersburg. And we are all in agreed that uh, at this point, PSJ is going to undertake to post a notice on its bulletin board, which is located downstairs in this building, where it normally posts notice for the meetings. They are also going to post notice on the website. Um, a little history, I, the statute only requires that reasonable notice be provided of all Sunshine Law meetings. The cases have not uh, Impose the requirement that notice be placed on a website. Um, in the cases of only required a posting somewhere of a notice that would reasonably give the public the opportunity to see the notice and be aware of the meeting and, and attend the meeting if they so desire. Um, but PSA is going to both post it on the bulletin board and on its website. Uh, and uh, all the attorneys agreed that that would meet the requirement for reasonable notice. And I see Mr. Sadowski is here, and he was one of the attorneys that I spoke with. Okay, and as far as public comment, we have it at the end of the agenda. Uh, am I correct? I hate to put it on the table, but in October, we will be changing that, and we will be having it at the beginning of the agenda, if that's all right with everyone. For people to make any comments they wish on any item, we will be discussing. And uh, rather than go item by item, sometimes it takes a little while. So that is what I will be requesting of uh, Rachel to set it up. And is that correct, Alan? Yes. Do they properly? Yes, Mr. Kennedy. If I could inquire as to, <coughs> there was an allegation that the all of our prior meetings did not comport with appropriate public notice. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, I have not yet gotten all of the information about every single prior meeting. I will say that Mr. Rask 
and I have a difference of opinion. He is um, wanting to apply strictly some guidelines that the Attorney General has put out about providing notice seven days prior to the meeting. There's no case that requires notice seven days prior to the meeting. There's no, as I said, no case that requires notice on the website. But I am in the process of gathering information about all the prior meetings. So far, I've not found one meeting that was unnoticed, other than the issue with the last meeting, because the notice, for some reason, you know, had not, through lack of communication, been posted on the bulletin board downstairs. And you'll follow up with us on that? Yes, as soon as I complete that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Anything else? Well, we will continue. Thank you, Alan, and thank you for being here. Um, thank you. Next is the work date update, or the work plan update. <coughs> you um, have in front of you, um, as part of your packet, an updated work plan. We've made um, some additions to this work plan since the last time you've seen it. Um, and a little bit more detail about uh, things that we're doing. Um, right now, we're, we're asking you today, and we'll have a series of presentations before that, so you have plenty of time to ask questions, um, to endorse the draft Green Light Pinellas Plan for Agency and Public Review. You know, so this is, again, this is part of, this is the step-by-step -step approach of bringing it through committees and, and the boards. Um, to, uh, to have that plan fully vetted um, by the end of the year. Um, as the government committee going to the Greenlight Council, you also bring this report to the Greenlight Council along with the business and the civic committees. Um, as we start to move forward with that, once we have that, that vision endorsed, we're then able to have a more refined discussion about that financial plan. Earlier this year, we talked about the financial assumptions coming out of the alternatives analysis. And as we move forward, we'll have a refinement based on the, um, the bus plan and the outcomes from that, um, as well as have a discussion about how the cash flow will work so that we can tell the public, and by the end of the year, how this will be phased in. What will this system work? We have what we have today, we'll have a vision, but what will it look like in five years, 10 years, 15? So people will know what's going to be happening. Uh, next time we'll also talk about the development concepts um, that the MPO along with PSTA have been working on. This is the baby book. This is what are the, the communities look at each of the station locations um, along the, the proposed rail line and what could that development <coughs> look like? Um, we'll also take these items as you move down into the coordination section. We're going to take these items to the MPO, to the PPC, and to the TBARTA board uh, for them also to, to take a look at what you all have been doing. Um, and then in November, officially approve the green light plan before it goes to the county commission. So as I said, today... Um, we're looking at <coughs> finalizing the endorsement of the green light plan elements, and we'll have some, some presentations uh, to that effect. The financial analysis and plan, which will be the next topic of discussion for your next meeting, um, is being led by the a general services consultant with PSTA, HNTB, and their subconsultant, Ernst & Young Infrastructure Advisors. And what they're doing is exactly what we need to be doing at this time, and that is refining the financial plan that we've had because we have new information with the conclusion of the bus plan. They're going to make sure that as we move forward, again, we can have that phasing, but we're using the information that we've done, checking it, and refining it. <clears throat> they are going to look at the assumptions that we've made, changes in the economy, Maybe look at how we would mitigate risks, whether that's an economic risk or a cost risk. Um, they'll look at the fare box recovery, make sure that we're in line with um, national examples. And also, it suggests some policies for how the PSTA board moves forward um, with the implementation of the green light plan. So out of the results that you'll see in October will be 
the recommended assumptions, whether those are the same or they have slight changes from the last ones that you've seen. Those policy recommendations, things like of the one cent sales tax that would be generated, we've talked about having a certain portion dedicated to bus, rail operations, and rail capital. Well, before the rail is operating, while we're in the construction phase, could you use the rail operations section for bus capital? Things like that. How do we manage our cash flow to make sure that we can get that, um, the plan accomplished? They'll also look at moving this into year of expenditure dollars. To date, we have been looking at 2011 dollars. We're now in fiscal year 14. So they'll move those numbers up and also look at as, as we start to space these out and prioritize projects, how would that year of expenditure look? This will fit directly with the long-range transportation plan. So we've been working very closely with the MPO to make sure that the work that they do, uh, the work that Ernst & Young does, fits directly into what the MPO is doing. Again, I think those, that risk mitigation, those backstops that the business committee has been talking about, making sure that we have um, some plan for risk mitigation and recovery. Um, and then again, that implementation, what's going to get built when? The uh, PSTA board um, approved this scope, um, and so HNTB and Ernst & Young are well on their way. Um, we are actually going to see them tomorrow to uh, catch them up with our uh, bus plan consultants um, and have, a, uh, have them all meet together to talk about um, moving forward with the financial plan. So that's today um, and the next meeting. Unless there's any questions, I'll, I'll move on to talking about what the outcomes are from the bus plan. In the packet before we got to the work plan update, there was a draft. That that will be coming at the end after they finish at the end. sum okay. everything up for us. We'll hold on to that. Okay. No other questions, you may continue. So the foundation of the green light plan is the community bus plan. Um, and we have been working on this over the past year. Um, some of this information you have seen before, um, but I'll just go over it quickly again. Um, and this committee specifically had asked for the no new revenue scenario. You wanted to see what happens if the potential sales tax referendum does not pass and what does PSTA face in that case. So as you know, this, the purpose of the bus element of the green light plan is to have a better bus system, but also engage the community in that conversation, and again, have a thoughtful approach to a variety of funding scenarios. This is in line with the other plans that we've done. Wherever we could, we use the information that's been generated over the last couple years, and we know that this has to fit into the green light Pinellas process. This is the schedule we've been following. Um, we are at plan recommendations and extending that plan adoption phase as part of the green light process. Um, so while we are concluded with the bus plan itself, that continued work of phasing will, will be within the context of green light. We have shown to you before the optimal scenario, which is an unconstrained scenario. And this is, this is very helpful to the MPO in their policy plan. Um, but this is if we were going to just create it without a funding constraint, what, that, what the bus system of Pinellas County would look like. And that concept was approved by the PSTA board in April as a way, as, a, as guidance for the others. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the new revenue scenario and the no new revenue scenario. So in the new revenue scenario, it does assume passage of a one cent sales tax along with the elimination of the PSTA ad valorem. It mirrors the financial assumptions of the alternatives analysis and includes that LPA alignment that, that this group has discussed. 
here are, is a, you know, we've seen these assumptions before about the percentage of money that goes to each of these elements in terms of the total cost of the system and the local cost, and that is the element of the one cent sales tax that would go to, e to funding each of the, these implementation lines. <clears throat> when we look at what PSC ha PSCA has in terms of non-fair revenues, existing versus the referendum, you see this is a considerable amount more for the bus. And still, even with the referendum, more than half of the dollars of non-fair revenue would go to bus. From a fundamental standpoint, the plan is to move from that hub and spoke system to a grid system. And what makes this work is the level of frequency that we're putting out on the street. This allows on-street transfers to be a lot easier. We don't have to have a lot of new big facilities where people have to sit and wait for a long time. We're also looking at just streamlining some of the routes. Um, again, this is not going to be, even with the network design concept of, um, if the, in the no new revenue scenario, this is not going to be the same bus system that we have today. We are going to have some efficiencies built in. You have seen this map before. This is the new revenue scenario. This would be 65% more service than we operate today. Um, as I mentioned, it is based off that structure of moving from the hub to the grid system. Um, it is consistent with the AA and, and has that foundation for rail. For the most part, we're really focusing on the core system, which are those those red lines, um, and these would be our rapid lines. We would increase the frequencies to 15 minutes or better. This means you have less of a need for a schedule, that people can go out and use the routes spontaneously. Being more uh, effective with our resources and the service delivery in this way, we're increasing the overall span of service, meaning late night and a little bit of early morning, and also improving weekend service. These are the two things that people have asked the most for, is how can I get home from class? How can I get home from the movies? How can I get home from dinner? And can I get to Tampa on the weekends? Those are the things that we hear a lot. This is that core network. The red lines, again, would be that, uh, that bus rapid transit or rapid corridors, where in some places we would have um, exclusive right of way, other places we would not, but they would run faster and there are some efficiencies that can be gained um, just in a little bit of infrastructure improvement. The yellow lines would be, uh, sorry, the orange lines are uh, increased local frequency on the local routes. So while well, the red lines would be limited stop services every half mile to a mile, the um, orange lines would be uh, closely spaced stops and these are just different types of service <coughs> to meet the right market and you do see a couple of those trolley services on that frequent network because these are the areas where we would be running at 15 minutes or better. This is an example of what um, a BRT line might look like in St. Petersburg um, but as as all of these lines come together, this is not so different than the roadway network where we need a supporting network in addition to just as you have arterials um, and collectors, you're having neighborhood streets. And so this supporting network that we're showing here has a little lower frequency but does connect to those core routes. These would include new community circulators in certain parts of, um, of the county where you would have smaller buses running in that area that makes sense to serve that area. This committee, um, as well as the PSTA committees, have talked extensively about the regional network and making sure that we have a robust regional network that makes sense for all parts of the county. Um, we have ad added a considerable amount of service in this area, and this would make sure that no matter where you were in the county, you could easily find a park and ride and get over to, uh, to uh, West Shore, the, the airport, and downtown Tampa. As I mentioned before, uh, evenings and weekends have been um, the area that we've cut back, as well as what people are asking for the most. 
So that frequent network would run until midnight, supporting network until, at least until 10 o'clock. Um, and then we'd have a tailored span of services for trolleys. In some cases, they would run very late. Um, some cases, they run Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like the Jolly Trolley services. Um, but again, it's, it's matching the, the service to the market that we're trying to serve. Um, I think one of the, the best things that we've done, again, weekend service, both Saturday and Sunday. Again, this is about this is about frequency, and this is this is the difference in what we have today versus what we could have in the future. Um, and I think this is probably the most telling picture of what we have out there today isn't very user friendly, and and we could do some really good things um, if we had more funding in order to put a lot of service out on the road. The no new revenue scenario, unless and there are any questions about the, the new revenue, and move on to the, the no new revenue scenario. Okay. To one of the slides that highlights the flex connector, the three quarter mile service area. Does that run in that, that loop as it shows, or does it, how does it operate? Those are three routes that run in North County, the, the service area is the deviation area, meaning that people can call up and if you are anywhere within, within that three quarter mile, you can call up and have that route from offline come to your door and go back online. Uh, you can also do it at the destination, as long as it's within that three quarter mile area. And the frequency of that service is 30 minutes? It would move to 30 minutes, I think we have. Um, it's an hour today. Pardon? Today it operates every hour. Yes, today it operates every hour. hour. In, in the new revenue scenario, it would go every 30 minutes. I was just concerned that, and we've talked to Brad before, that there's not a either Tampa Road or Curlew Road, some kind of direct connection. But maybe it's not needed if that, if that frequently takes people to where they need to go. It does go over to Tampa. Okay. So the trolley goes to 19? Or what? Are you looking at the connector, the, the orange area, the service area? Right. That goes into the across Tampa. It goes through Oldsmar to. It, do, it does not go from shops at Boot Ranch, Tampa Road, over to the. to. Um, the Gulf of Mexico. All 19? No, no. They're all 19, yeah. Have you looked at that as a possible route that had more frequency? That could be a possibility if we change some of the existing routes that are out there. You know, has been fairly new, and we've seen such an increase in demand on there that I think that that is one of those things where we'll continue to evolve and has the potential to be a little bit different than even what it is on this map today because of the history that we'll have by the time we make those changes. Um, the new revenue scenario, again, this is looking at PSTA today. We're looking at, we have 43 routes, only two of them run at 15 minute frequency. For the no new revenue, we are using the same ass uh, assumptions that we use for our budget, um, that costs would grow at approximately 5.6% uh, a year, non-fair revenues at 1.3%. Um, we have been asked about fair increases. We do have that in the model for about every three to five years. Um, we've also talked about there are, there's no one way to balance the budget. Um, so this is there are this is a one strategy um, that we have in order to do that. But if there is no new revenue, one of the strategies is to reduce service um, with a one-time reduction of 20, approximately 28 percent, in order to balance that budget by 2023. Now we those um, we always balance our budget. Um, and there is, so this is, again, only one scenario, one option for us to do that. 
So this is just a little graph, I think some of you have seen this before, um, of our general revenues. And this is again from June of this year. And where we are right now for, a, uh, for our expenses, we, would, we know that from the budgets that we are able to extend this out a little bit. But this is an illustration of where we're going to be regardless of whether it's in 2017 or 2018 is we are going to have to make a significant cut. We've been able to stay stable because of the reserves. And without those reserves continuing, uh, we will have to make those cuts. So a 15% cut is what we would have to make in that first year. But again, as you can see, every year after that, we would have to make additional cuts. So every year you're changing the service that you're putting out to people. If we make a larger cut, we are able to build up some reserves and continue to have a stable system through at least 2023. So what does that look like for us? Um, we do want to make those efficiencies in the system going from where we are today to streamlining some of the routes. So we would still do that. But if we want to take this concept of moving forward with more of a grid system, we would have to use, have some spontaneous use frequency on those core routes. So what we would propose is that in 2020, in order to get to 2023, that we would reduce the service by approximately 28%, and then we could allocate those bus hours in two different ways. Again, these are almost like bookends of what we could do. The, the reality of what we would do would be somewhere in the middle, and I think the PSTA board in 2017 or 2018 would have to start making those decisions about where to cut first and where to reallocate those hours. Again, we, as we've seen from the bus consultants, um, we, we're maintaining a frequency in strong market areas will really help us to maintain the fare box. And so again, we've taken that to as, as a principle in the development of these options. So strategies for taking the new revenue scenario, or the no new revenue scenario into implementation would be either focusing on the core system that you saw earlier, again, starting to put more, higher frequency on the, that core network, or keep more of what we have today, which is a coverage focus, making sure that there was, there was evenly spaced routes, but it would mean that would be a lot less frequency. So in the core routes, we would have six routes that would run at 15 minute frequency. Um, we would have about 10 routes that would be discontinued. Um, we would also have significantly reduced weekend service. In the coverage focus, um, we'd still restructure the routes, but we would have the same or worse frequencies that we have today. Um, we would reduce Saturday service and eliminate Sunday service. Um, this would also include potentially more cuts because when you reduce the frequency, it also reduces uh, the ridership very significantly. So again, these are side-by-side -side comparisons of what those networks would look at, like. Um, but based on, on behavior, uh, we think that the core focus would still have a, a higher ridership potential. So again, this is about trade-offs. Um, if there is a reduction in, um, in service, we're going to have to decide where those reductions ha happen. Um, we would, may need to have more funding partnerships with local jurisdictions in order to maintain some service. So the cuts may be less if we're able to find other sources, whether that's other public funding um, or other partnerships. Um, and again, this is about prioritizing what we're going to do and how we're going to do it if there is no new revenue. Are there any questions about the, the no new revenue plan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about the no revenue plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, we have for you as a handout um, some side-by-side -side comparisons of the service for each of these scenarios. Again, the bus plan was supposed to come up with multiple scenarios to respond to a variety of, of, of funding options. Um, and what that means for these different services that we're putting out on the road. Um, so you can see it side by side. Now you'll also notice that we have a column there, it's called baseline. So that is the restructured service from the existing. So it will not match exactly what we have out there existing today um, because there would still be changes recommended by uh, the consultant to put out for today. I'm going to turn it over to um, Commissioner Crozier um, and Brad for the discussion of the overall picture of what is in the green light plan. Um, and this uh, is where I think you'll want to look at the, um, the potential endorsement sheet, the res resolution style endorsement. Uh, that talks about all of the pieces of the plan. Because even though we've focused a lot on the bus today, I know this, this group knows better than, than a lot of others that, that the green light plan is so much more than just the bus plan, even though that is the foundation. So, I'm trying to get. Um, we have one question. Just on the matrix, do we have this um, in a digital format? Uh, yeah. Just Send out. Okay. <coughs> hey, Brad. We'll do Brad's uh, presentation first. And if you would keep the very last slide up there for me, I appreciate it. And then we'll talk about the draft. Uh, hey, good afternoon. afternoon. So this is the uh, this is an action item for you to consider for today. Uh, the, the resolution that uh, recommending that you uh, approve is on page 11 of your packet, uh, as Cassandra just said. And, and what this is, is that you are endor endorsing the Greenlight Pinellas Plan vision. The reason that we are calling it a vision is uh, because this is somewhat of a uh, symbolic vote. The PSTA board uh, approved of this two weeks ago, or a a week and a half ago at their meeting um, already and we would um, we would seek uh, MPO and PPC approvals as well but again this is not your final vote but this is a symbolic vote that represents that the technical work that Cassandra just went through on the, the bus plan the uh, rail alternative analysis and the land use uh, work that we've been working with the MPO uh, and PPC on are, are all now complete and it's important to take this vote now so that we uh, set ourselves up that this is what we are using to base our assumptions on for the more detailed financial work that Ernst & Young is now engaged with. Um, so again I've got uh, just a few slides just to reiterate what Cassandra has already talked mostly about. When you're done, I was just yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. I, that's what I want to talk about. So, hook it up. I'm okay. sorry. Go right ahead. Okay. So again, the Greenlight Pinellas plan, and I, I jotted down here that you will be make you will be according to that schedule that work program. Uh, you can see the dates on there. November is a sort of traditional uh, date when people in America make decisions on things and that will be the decision making time for most of the transportation groups in Pinellas County. November 4th, uh, the ACPT has a meeting, that's the day before election day, uh, where you will be asked to, uh, to approve the Greenlight Pinellas plan to, t to, to uh, move forward to Pinellas County. November 13th is the MPO and PPC dates. Uh, and this would be an action item for the MPO and PPC to approve of the Greenlight Pinellas plan. And then PSTA is having a meet its meeting on November 20th. All those are in advance of the county's uh, workshop and votes on December 3rd and 10th. 
and, and perhaps uh, the final vote on the 17th of uh, December, uh, because you need to have two, two uh, public hearings. Okay, so that's how this is playing out. Today's vote is on the, green, the vision. We'll come back to you at your next month meeting with the, uh, the work that's being done by Ernst & Young on the financial, uh, financial plan. Uh, and, we're, and we're also putting together the delivery plan uh, as well. So, but again, so the components of the vision that you're approving uh, today is the bus plans that like Cassandra just talked, the new revenue scenario. That, that this would be the scenario that we would move forward with the Green Light Pinellas plan. It would be a 65% uh, increase from the current PSA bus service, and it would be that transition from the hub system of today, the low frequency hub system, to the high frequency grid system. Uh, it would include the rapid corridors, the bus rapid transit components, uh, and connect major employment activities across the county. Most importantly, it would dramatically increase frequency of the buses. Uh, going from uh, a mostly uh, 45 minutes to an hour service to multiple, as you can see by this map, multiple 15-minute uh, frequent corridors. Um, uh, in a, and then in addition, and even though uh, frequency is what our consultants have said all along is the most important thing to drive ridership, increase fares, and really make it a viable system for more and more people, especially people who have cars to ride. Frequency is the key. When we've been out and about, and we certainly have, talking to a public, what they ask all about is span of service. Is it going to run late at night enough for me or my job or whatever? And, and this plan does include that uh, in a big way. Uh, extending the entire network to 10 p.m. minimum uh, certain trolleys and other services, especially for employment jobs at the beach and whatnot, would even run even longer. Uh, just depends on the on the service. Weekend service would increase by 80 percent from what we what we have today. We do have Saturday and Sunday service, but especially on Sundays, it's bare minimum. Uh, almost every route is operating every hour, and most of it ends at uh, six o'clock at night. Again, ridership is not necessarily higher late at night, at 10 o'clock at night, but what, what extending the span of service to longer periods increases ridership throughout the day. If you know you can get home at night or late at night, or you know there's another bus after the one you think you're going to take, but just in case, that will cause more people to ride in the middle of the day and increase the whole productivity of the network. The Greenlight Pinellas Plan, as, as this group knows probably more than any other, since you were formerly known as the Project Advisory Committee, uh, includes the proposed uh, rail system from Clearwater to the Gateway area to St. Petersburg. And th this is based on the Pinellas Alternatives Analysis and the approved locally preferred alternative. And then last but not least, uh, the Greenlight Pinellas Plan includes the land use work that the uh, PSTA and the MPO have, have now completed that uh, evolved around uh, 16 station area plans, many of which, which were uh, visioned by the charrette process, uh, very specifically engaging the business and development community around the areas that, that can transform through this investment in transportation over time. And we're putting that together now. The consultants are uh, uh, sort of packaging that together, uh, and, and that will be presented to you uh, next at your next ACPT meeting. So that's what this is. That's what this uh, action item is today. And I'd be glad to answer questions. But the action is to approve of this vision, the bus plan, the rail plan, the land use plan, uh, as those components uh, that will go into the draft plan. I will remind you that the ACPT is also serving as the Greenlight Pinellas uh, Government Committee. The Greenlight Pinellas process that we're engaged in right now is a public outreach process, and we, as you know, we have engaged the business and civic committees, and you are acting as that government third leg of the stool. Uh, and that there's a council meeting uh, coming up this month on the 25th of September, uh, and so. By, by the ACPT 
endorsing the vision, uh, it moves forward in that fashion too, that uh, all, all, all groups, uh, uh, part of our community, are moving forward with this Greenlight Pinellas plan. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I, the reason I wanted this slide left up here is to remind everybody that's what this is, the vision, those are the components. They've worked them through us as other uh, uh, prospective agencies have gone through and worked it. Um, PSTA has already approved this. I do have, before we open, I open it up for discussion. And we know the discussion there may be on this. If not, if everybody approves this, then we'll just have a motion. But I have to ask, when you presented this to your PSTA board, did they make any modifications, more smoothing of mortgage, anything of that nature? For clarity? No. no. Okay. All right. This goes with the vision. Hopefully this says what the vision is. And Mr. Kennedy, I'm going to start with you. And I'm going to open it up for discussion, and then when we've had enough discussion, I'll close it. Have a motion, and life is good. Thank you, and uh -huh. thanks for the presentations. Um, <clears throat> from the point of view of the, the draft resolution, <clears throat> I kind of think we need to put more factual information in there, like when Brad was saying, you know, 75% of the funding is for bus. Mm -hmm. that, that it'll improve, you know, the increase 65, the length of times of the stops. I'm thinking we need to put some of those facts in there, and especially when we go down to Section 3, I'm not sure why we don't have all 26 municipalities in Pinellas County listed in there, because this is a, a county-wide scenario, and, and we should be working with all of the municipalities, not just the, the, ones, the ones listed there is, is my thought. So I'd like to see a, more facts put in here. That are, Let's ask the question. And, and where is this? Is this just going to go to the council? Is this going to be used for the public? Where is this going to be used? Because I agree with the facts, but is, are you attaching that brief little scenario with this? Where does this go? Uh, it goes nowhere. I mean, it, 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 it is a vehicle for you to discuss exactly what the vision is that the ACPT uh, would like to see in the Greenland Pinellas plan. Uh, but to the extent, if your question is, is it okay if the PSTA adopted a slightly different one than the ACPT does, then say the MPO or some other group, that, that would be okay. Uh, I mean, the, the, the comment about whether uh, additional details should be put in here than is otherwise um, in here, certainly doable. Um, I think the slide says that there will be a 65% increase in the bus system from today. Uh, that's, what, that's what that said. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the same question that you just asked that was raised at the PSTA board about why aren't all 24 cities listed in that uh, section three and the answer and the reason is that this is the, uh, the land use piece, the land use vision, and so those are the communities, those communities listed are the communities that the proposed rail system runs through. So that's where the land use work was done with those cities. We are working with all 24 municipalities in Pinellas County on this whole system, but the, the land use work the technical work was done in those in those communities. Is this document is this going to be used to create a final document that goes to the public or that you use for the selling of Greenlight? Advocate. Advocate. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> what do the rest of you think? And Cassandra, do you have this, this needs to go to the Green Light Council. This is what the ACPT okay. takes to the Green Light Council. You, you know, you'll have these things attached. Um, you know, it is, it, it's, is you, this you've a, seen, oh, this is, this is a summary of what you've been seeing. Um, for the green, it, if you okay. want to put other pieces of information about the plan into it for clarity, I see absolutely no problem with that, um, but 
but the, the, what's been presented today is the new revenue scenario, and the new revenue scenario is, is listed. Uh, I mean, the other thing I would say is you know, we've been working with the PPC, and they are they are the countywide agency that's leading a discussion of land use and how it relates to this plan and the, the, the transit elements. So this piece of paper, we're asking for endorsement from from us, PSTA, to bar to everybody. And then this will go to the Green Army Government Council, who will take this plus all the data, and this explains to them what's going on. This is this is your data. summary of what okay. the green what you as the Green Light Government Committee have discussed. And this presentation or a presentation very similar to this will accompany this for them, or are they going to work off of this piece of paper? So we can we'll, we'll add the presentation to it to make sure they get it, the business and civic get it all together. Okay, let's have some. Uh, okay. Jim, did you have something else I'm right good now? Good for now. For now, okay. Ms. Seal? Okay, a um, couple things. One is I'm looking at the map, and we've had this discussion before, and you might have had the discussion at PSTA, but basically north of 580, north of Gotha Bay, there is not very robust service for North County. Um, I, what happened, I know you were looking at the East Lake Road corridor and doing a more robust service there. We had asked that at one of the meetings. Whatever came of that? Well, it, it, it's on. It's, you see yes. that green line? It's the green line is that is considered the regional express. Yeah. Okay. So that is how often then? Regional express. Sorry, but there's. It's, it's on your chart. I mean, it's uh, during the rush hour. Uh, it's, it's frequent and in the off peak. It's, it's a commuter oriented. Okay. All right. Well, the um, the other thing that I want to know is if you look at the logo of Green Light Pinellas, you have bicycle bicycles and you have pedestrians, and we don't have anything in the plan for. And I have talked with Brad about this, so it's not a surprise. But um, you know, we applied for a Tiger Grant to finish the Tiger Center Trail from St. Petersburg all the way up to Eastlake. And that's about a $20 million project. Um, I think throwing it into the mix could be a viable thing, especially if Ernst & Young is going to do the finances. Right now we have, according to the plan, about $2.9 million left every year. So um, I'd like to put that out for consideration as having one other piece that makes it connect because if you have the entire progress energy and Pinellas Trail that goes around the county, it would make it easier to um, to for folks to get around. Are you so, um, putting it on a map? You're putting it into the, the program, the green light oh. program. Putting something that happens, I'm, I'm going to be fine. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. I, I want to go back to what we were just discussing as it relates to endorsement. <laughs> Today we're endorsing the Green Light Pinellas Plan so that you can move forward with your governing uh, committee for Green Light. And I think, um, Mr. Kennedy, on your uh, topic of Section 3, um, what we can do is simply include, rather than having listing the, all those cities, we can change the wording there to to include all within Pinellas County because public uh, the Pinellas Planning Council when they do those the land plan and maps and the land use <coughs> maps as you know because we will sit on that um, they will include so rather than listing all the cities out there we can we can have a change that I would think for Cassandra to to state that it would encompass all the Pinellas cities all the cities within the municipalities. Oh. Go ahead, Mike. One jump in on that and, and what Commissioner Kennedy asked for. This land use component under Section 3 really does only involve Pinellas County, Clearwater, Largo, Pinellas Park, and St. Pete, because this is the development concepts that part of the land use plan. We are working, and we'll bring that to you in October, the overall place where we are with the Pinellas Planning Council as far as overall land use from north to south, east to west. But this, for clarity purposes, when it says land use, it means only the development concepts. So 
if we were to include all 24 local governments in the county in here, it might not be in the right place. So there's some clarity that I think needs to be Yeah, I think you're right about the clarification here. You know, land use slash development concepts or what have you, but it's really the station area planning and all the work that goes along with the, the 16 different stations. We're developing that into the broader picture, but this is more specific, <coughs> more site related. So if that changes yeah, that things does, from what you're saying. Does. Okay. It could be worded just a little bit differently, though, so that it would include all of them, even though we list a few of the key north, south, east, and west cities. Right? Is that correct? Well, the, the, again, the land use component, the, the, um, the stations that the, this land use component that Section 3 talks about, the stations are only within those communities that are discussed in here. The Pinellas Planning Council is in there because we're taking those station concepts, we have them already in the county of rules relative to the allowable densities and intensity. So that's our coordination there, but it's only limited to along the corridor within those five communities. We're working on something, again, that goes okay. Tarpon Springs and Oldsmar and Indian Rocks Beach, I and mean, our whole land use plan is changing, but that's a different, a different uh, this is much more specific to only the stations and the radar. So that are related to the green light plan at this point, right. correct? Right. Right. Did you have another? Oh, the other, I do have one more, and that is to also amplify Commissioner Seals' comment about the fact of, of pedestrian and bike. In that, I think we do need to throw that in the rain because as she just spoke of us working for that Tiger grant, we need to continue to figure out how we can go back to uh, Fox and, and do another grant perhaps or engage in, in public private partnership with some sort of pedestrian and bike type of plan that is included in, in there. Since the logo does have that on it, I think we need to make sure we include something. Pedestrian and bicycle is included in the logo because there are elements of the plan that has integrated access in the transit system. Everybody who gets on a bus or rail is a pedestrian or a bicyclist first and last. And so we have in the plan money set aside around station areas to make sure that we have enhanced sidewalks and bike connections, again, related to the transit project. So that's in every BRT project, that's in the rail projects. So there's, I mean, there's things that we would do as part of transit projects that benefit more than just transit, that benefit pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists. You know, if we make intersection improvements for a transit project, that will be better for everyone. So in, it makes sense to me to have it in, in the logo from that standpoint. The discussion of another project is one for other people to engage in. Okay. And I agree with what Cassandra is saying. I don't think this is the time to divert some of our funds to something else. Um, there's not enough money sitting in the penny passes. It's not enough money to do all that we have planned. And we don't know what the costs are going to be at that time. I'm very supportive of completing that trail, and I think we need to continue to work to find funding to do it. But changing the direction now would be very confusing and just not in the best interest. And my fear is someday we're going to be looking at this going, okay, we have this much money, what are we going to cut? We wanted to do this, we thought we could afford to, and I'm not talking about the the, the trail plan, but just looking at what we have planned and going, well, we're going to have to wait three more years for that. Or, you know, we don't know what it's going to cost when the bill gets it. I'm very reluctant to keep piling on. Um, maybe we'll be able to. Maybe everything will come in under budget. <laughs> and uh, we'll be able to go, yeah, we can finish that trail. But I just, I, we're way too far into this. To start converting funds. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, uh, going to the um, resolution, we
we, we did have a conversation. It's very similar to what just occurred at PSTA in regards to the three municipalities versus the 24. And for the very reasons that Mike just stated, we left it alone. But we, we went through this exact same dialogue because of the way it looked. So we're all thinking the same thing. But one of the, one of the other reasons we left it alone, too, was because I think what we came back to was this wasn't a specific goal document. It was about, look, we support this vision. There's the map. Like you said, there's the presentation. It's the vision. Some of those things are going to change along the way. That percentage may be 75, it may be 73. It, we didn't want to tie ourselves into a box. And so we said it's the vision of, of what all this says is what we are supporting. <coughs> that we get, again, all those little steps that Cassandra mentioned, step by step by step, <coughs> that we still get another bite at the a apple to, to so endorse the exact thing. This is just saying, yep, we like where it is right now for the moment, and then we'll move on. So that's kind of why we didn't, we sort of gave up on adjusting the resolution because it was like, look, it's not meant to be specific. It's meant to be vision, a vision, but we're supporting a vision. And, you know, we could have been there for an hour trying to figure out the language for the municipalities. So just on that issue. And then um, on the issue of one of the thing, one of the presentations that um, Brad showed us not too long ago, and I forget exactly how you presented it, but but it was really interesting. What you did was you said, here's why we are not going to fail at this. This is what we're not doing that others have done. And one of those items that others had done, I believe it was Charlotte, had added uh, something for everybody. Trails, there was that walkway that wasn't meant to be the walkway next to the rail line. I don't know if I've got the right city. I just remember there was a particular city that had added this stuff in for the very reasons we're talking about, all valid reasons to, you know, to do it. But, and they, they are over budget and can't do what they intended to do because all these things got added late in the game. And so you gave us a nice presentation on that and, and I don't know, three or four other things that we are not doing, the other people that struggled, that we're doing differently and better. And so I want to learn from those things and keep this, uh, you know, simple. Very simple, straightforward, not complicated. Because it's already a complicated subject. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we go back to the slide that has the um, project schedule? Schedule? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. It's in a different presentation. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. It's like the Samsung commercial. You can't do two things at once. <laughs> I apologize. Business have concluded, and they have they have both uh, uh, endorsed endorsed it. They did not have this uh, exact resolution. Okay, but they had a they each have their own process. Okay, so they're not all going to be identical in, anyway. Correct. So the target for this um, is the green light council that will meet on the twenty fifth and have the 
endorsements, recommendations from the three. E each group is going to report out on what their what their discussion had been and uh, what what their discussions at their group had been and what led them to their ultimate decision to support this plan. Okay. And our chair will be out. And yes. so, just so I want to make sure we're all on the same page and I want to be clear on, on where this is going. Um, and given that, I think the language is okay. I understand your concerns, uh, Councilman Kennedy, if this was going out to the public. But I think the audience being that Green Light Council, I think this is enough information. In a couple of places, the third whereas, it talks about countywide bus scenarios. I think that's where you're going. This needs to be looked at as a countywide effort. That's what it is. Uh, and down in the fifth or sixth, whereas it talks about countywide public transportation plan. Um, section one talks about transformational bus system for the entire county. So I think we need to keep hammering away at that. But the land use, I think, for the reasons Mike and others have talked about, that's why those those three cities are identified. I'm I am frankly very excited about where we are now. Um, I don't know if you're ready for a motion, but. Uh, well, I didn't have anything else. Or one or one. Got it. On a uh, first, before I go to a totally new topic, the question with the um, with North County and setting up, <clears throat> there's still going to be quarters and um, potentially hubs along those lines, not 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 in, in bus stations as opposed to rail stations, but that's still the the concept. And that's the portion that you're saying we're still working on some with, with North County to be finalized. I think maybe those are two different things. Um, there, there, as you'll see, and you saw on the map that was up earlier, there's significant amount of service in the northern part of the county. Um, in fact, again, I stated this a couple of months ago, when you look at all the roads that are available, almost every major road that's available in North County has some kind of service or increase in service in it. So from a service perspective, I think there's a lot offered to North County, and obviously not rail for one. But from what I was talking about, you know, we're changing every land use category from a single family area that doesn't have access to transit. And we're also adding the corridors, which would be the core network that, like US 19, that runs up and down Tarpon Springs. Uh, we're changing that from start to finish. And what I was differentiating here is the, when, when you're referring to land use here, it's referring to the development concepts that are only pertaining to the rail stations. What we're developing and bringing to the council on Wednesday, as Commissioner Kennedy knows, is a brochure that will go along with this at the same time. It's not the land use component, but it's up, what's happening on an updated countywide plan basis and where we are and how we tie in the Green Line Canal. So it's running parallel. But I was just trying to clarify the difference between what's being called land use here, which is the baby book or the development concepts um, that are being endorsed by those communities that have a rail line, and what we're doing countywide. I've kind of talked about every, everything. I hope that answers your question. Right, and, and I, I appreciate <clears throat> looking at it a little bit differently as a, a very limited audience to this. Initially, I was not appreciating the limited audience and looking at it from something that a general member of the public looked at it, it, it seemed parochial in, in, in that regard. So with, with that understanding, I still want to make sure that we don't, because North County is extremely vital to the entire success of this. Well, it is. In a couple of places, we mentioned um, community collector uh, circulators. Uh, additional circulators, they've talked about that and that that's going to come about, but we've not, I don't think they have it all laid out, am I correct at this point, but I know there's going to be these little circulators that are going to be taking people to the main, that big gray, red, whatever, and they can hop on and do their thing, so. Because if I was a man, if I was Tarpon Springs, I'd say give me my own little bus that goes round and round and drops me at that that station that I can then go wherever I want. I've been trying to get that in Largo with my development uh, lady over there. Find me the money and I'll do it for you. But I think all municipalities should have their own little. But they are. They've mentioned it in a couple different ways. So I don't. I feel we've tried to address 
the northern part through some of that. And one last question um, for, for Brad, and this is kind of hypothetically, if a uh, different alternative came up for, uh, for the conventional light rail, mm -hmm. when would that alternative have to be part of this plan? The plan uh, includes, are we taking straight out of the locally preferred alternative that was approved a year ago from the Pinellas Alternative Analysis, which was uh, a process, uh, actually a two-year process that led to that technology decision. If a future technology were to be identified and somehow supported but did not go through its own alternative analysis or was uh, determined to be a replacement for this this component, uh, it, uh, it couldn't be done. It, it would have to go through some sort of review process. But that being said, that's not uh, that could happen. I, I would say the drop dead deadline to go through a process and to introduce a alternative technology that met the goals and objectives of that were reaching for uh, would have to be sometime prior to the conclusion of the environmental work uh, that would be that's going to be started and finished within the first two years after a successful referendum. So it's not today, but it would have to go through a process and be uh, approved before that environmental got done. Because you want to know the impacts, the environmental impacts of whatever you were proposing whether it's uh, air impacts to flying saucers or, um, I don't know, whatever else. So you were saying basically two years after the approval? Was that your, is that your time period? Yeah. Or? Actually, the federal government has just instituted a deadline for doing your environmental work. Uh, you can take no longer than two years. Uh, yeah. So they're trying to cut red tape and streamline, but that means maybe reducing uh, <coughs> the open-endedness of their of what you can do. But so they say, once you start, it's a finish in two years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Dan. Right. And this conversation comes up in a lot of presentations, whether it's the, the bike lanes or the high-speed ferries or the future technologies. But I, I think in, in all those scenarios, you have to have the, the supporting network. You have to have a way to get to the high speed ferry, a way to get to, to these different things. And I, I think there is opportunities. I mean, we're doing those pedestrian amenities on Central Avenue ahead of this plan because the plan was in place that we got federal grants and working with the county and PSTA to put the pedestrian and bike amenities ahead of the plan. And, and I think when it's there, when it's placed, when it's solidified, and certainly if it's, if it's voted on by the public, um, it, it opens up a whole lot of opportunities to, to have those new technologies and different things feed into it. Um, I saw the high-speed ferry presentation putting it right on the waterfront in downtown St. Petersburg in a parking lot that's full now. So how do you get there? You know, it, it has to it has to be a component of the whole plan. So I I think we need, do need to move forward with this and, and you know, keep it open, but understand that this this has to be in place first. Okay. With that, I will entertain a motion. Is there a motion? I mean, I have the motion. Oh, I thought you said you entertain a motion. I will entertain one. I thought I think the commission motion. No, that's fine. Okay. So I, I move to approve our agreement. You endorse. You move to endorse the Green Line Commission uh, plan as as stated. Second. The second. All those. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay. There you go. A lot of good discussion. Uh, a lot of information. Next <coughs> month will be even more exciting. I can't wait. Uh, Cassandra? Can I talk about the schedule? Or? I think we've talked a lot about the schedule. <laughs> yes. And I'm so glad it's up there now. Um, so the information that you have discussed today will be taken to 
the Green Light Council. That meeting will be on uh, September 25th. And then you will see some refinements of the work out of the financial plan on uh, your October 14th meeting. Where is the council meeting? Is it here? Uh, September 25th. No, it is not. I believe we have set up the TDRPC. Okay. Okay. So that was just oh. finalized like maybe 20 minutes ago. So I was going to so say I haven't seen it yet. Final location. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Anything else? Um, I have a question. Is our meeting next month, October 7th? I didn't see it here. And I got October 14th. It. October 14th. Okay. But then in the November went from the 14th to the 7th. Uh, the 11th November fourth. Eleventh from the eleventh to the fourth. Okay, that's must have been where I got. Okay, so the meeting is. Okay. All right. Any other discussion by staff before we uh, invite our public? I do happen to have two cards. Is Mr. Last here? I don't see him. He was here. We'll see who comes in. Uh, Phil Compton? Compton? Yeah, thank you. Just take a minute. Uh, Phil Compton with Sierra 12. I uh, just want to say that uh, I and uh, a number of our local members have been involved in the Civic Committee of Greenlight Pinellas. Mm -hmm. And I just want to applaud the staff and everyone involved in that because it's been a very open process that has been, I think, very worthwhile with the representatives of the, the community. Is it everyone? No, of course not. Are all viewpoints that came to the meeting heard and expressed? Yes. Was it unanimous? No. But I think the vast majority of people supported that, as they did in the business committee with the business leaders there. And that really reflects what we've heard the last two years in talking to people on both sides of Tampa Bay, especially in Pinellas County, about what we see in our transportation system. People here really do want to have the same kind of choices that most other Americans in urban areas have, the kind of choices that you are talking about here today. So thank you for your decision today to move forward because this is really what people do want. And with a good education campaign to let people know what they'll get for their money, I think that uh, you know, it would be a very fair question for the public when it comes to that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, else, maybe we'll our okay. Having nothing else for us, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next month. This is the